afternoon. Thank you for being here. Um, now that our women's hockey season is concluded, we're prepared to publicly launch the search for our next women's hockey head coach. We're excited about that process. We've got great student athletes, great tradition, great facilities, and uh, we believe we've got one of the best jobs in the country. So we look forward to uh, the search process. We look forward to finding the next leader of our program uh, and seeing what they can do to further our mission, which is the three C's, excellence in the classroom, excellence in the community, and excellence in competition. Very proud of our, our Bulldog history and tradition and student athletes and how they drive that mission forward. Uh, we're looking for someone who's experienced uh, in the college hockey ranks. We'd like someone who's got some national team connections we think that it's very important. Uh, we're looking for someone who's a proven recruiter. Uh, we've got a great, diverse, and robust search committee and we look forward to working with that group to help guide the process and lead us to the next great leader of our program. And we really do believe that it is one of the top jobs in the country. So with that, I'd like to introduce Abby Strong. Abby Strong is the student athletic director for compliance at summer camps here at UMD, and she's the chair of our search committee. Hello. Um, as a former Division I student athlete at the University of North Dakota, um, I'm very passionate about the sport of women's hockey. Um, I'm a member of the senior staff here at um, UMD, and I'm very excited to help in the search process for the next great leader of our women's hockey team. Um, I believe in UMD and I believe in the success of our student athletes. Um, early indications show a significant amount of interest in this position. So I'm excited to get started. Okay, folks, media, any questions for Josh or Abby? And they will take all questions here. There won't be any one on ones following, so please ask your questions now. Thank you. Josh, question about the job posting. It listed there that this is going to be an annual contract. Um, I think Shannon had a, a multi year contract. We see he's got a multi year. That's the default. Uh, okay. the, terms, the terms of the contract will be negotiated with the selected candidate. Okay, so it's not necessarily you guys are going with just an annual renewable like you would with men's basketball or women's basketball. In all likelihood, it'll be a multi year contract, okay. but that'll be negotiated with our, with our finalists. Okay. Yeah. Can you guys comment at all on, on who's been either approached you or who you've approached, whether it be someone you know, from in the community or from another school? Have you gotten interest in? Can you talk about the yep. you've gotten it? Um, I've reached out to our contacts in the hockey community. That would be coaches, administrators of women's hockey programs. Um, Significant interest from both head coaches and assistant coaches at the Division One and Division Three level. And we can't comment on specific mm -hmm. candidates. Josh, for, for salary range on this, is are, are you still looking at what you told me originally back in December, which you guys are looking for something more in the range of what's being paid out there by St. Cloud, Mankato, Bemidji, rather than what uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota are paying for this? I don't think I don't think that's what I said. I think that was the context that it was taken in. But uh, we're going to have a competitive salary, no question. We're committed to the program. Ultimately, the salary is going to be commensurate with the candidate that's hired, but it'll be a competitive salary. So you guys could competitive salary competitive with Minnesota and Wisconsin. It's going to depend on who we end up hiring. Earlier, when um, the cuts were made on for the coming season. Laura Schuler, the assistant coach now, had made a comment about wanting to apply for the job. You know, was her application welcomed by the, the committee? Will you guys look at her as a candidate as well if she well, does apply? Sure. We, we can't comment on any specific specific mm -hmm. applicants, but we would certainly welcome Laura's application. No question. Yeah. I mean, all indications are we're going to have a, a, a strong, diverse, robust candidate pool. Josh, I'm sure you're aware of the issue, the situation in Iowa with the Title IX complaint involving field hockey. Does, does that change the process at all for you and the way you want to go about this? You know, we're, we're an institution that's very committed to Title IX. Uh, in fact, our student athlete population almost identically mirrors our student body population. And we believe we provide a great experience for our, our male and our female student athletes. And I think you see that in the success that many of our female teams have. So we're going to run a, a great process, an inclusive process. It's going to be a thoughtful process. And we're going to select a great next leader for, for our women's hockey program. And I'd like to add that I am working with national organizations, such as the National Association of Collegiate Women's Athletic Administrators, the American Hockey Coaches Association, the Tucker Center at the University of Minnesota, and the Alliance of Women Coaches. Any concern with how this whole process has played out that it could affect the, the applicant pool? We're excited about the process, and all indications are that from the candidates uh, that have expressed interest, they're excited too. 
the two current players, Ashley and, and Sydney, have you talked with them about, you know, I mean, they've still got a couple years left here. Have you talked with them about what their expectations are of the process and, and who, what kind of uh, person they'd like to see uh, replace Shannon? I think it's important that student athletes have a voice in a coaching hire. Uh, it's someone that they will spend a lot of time with. It's someone who will likely be a strong mentor and leader for them. So we're excited to have student athletes as part of the process. We're excited to have alumni as part, part of the process. And uh, we've, we've had conversations with several members of our, our current team about what characteristics they feel make a coach successful. And that's something that I've done in previous searches and has led to some pretty good, pretty good uh, candidates. That combined with uh, maybe the direction of the program, have you kind of thought about what kind of person you'd like to see uh, in that role? What I mean, what specifics sure. you're looking for? Yeah, I think we alluded to a few of them earlier. For us, it's really about the three seasons, that commitment to excellence in the classroom, in the community, uh, and in competition. And, and then finding a person who um, is very committed to those three C's and is committed to the direction of our women's hockey program. So as we've said, we're, we're, we're excited about where we're headed. And with those two girls, both of them being sophomores, how important was I mean, was it a, a key at all in picking those particular players as I mean, being a part of hopefully a couple more years of you know, future the future here as well as having experience with kind of the program in the past to link it? Sure. Year? We reached out to the many constituents that surround the women's hockey program mm -hmm. um, and, and sought volunteers who were kind enough to give their time uh, and their expertise in ensuring that we have a, a great process to lead us to a great candidate. And Sydney and Ashley were, were kind enough to do that. And we're, uh, we're, we appreciate all the committee members, but particular our student athletes, making sure that there's a voice in the process. Josh, have you had any current players come to you requesting transfers um, yet? Or, or no, those, uh, we're not going to comment on specific. Well, um, not specifically, right. but have members of the team looked at not coming back, as far as you know? Yeah, yeah I'm, I, you know, I, I'm not really in a position to comment on that. We have an open door policy with our student athletes. We want what's best for them, and we support them. Yeah. How, can you kind of explain how that process works? If a, if a student athlete did want to transfer if any sport, they got to come to. Is it to you to get a release from from the Yep. Um, I would release them to the school that they asked for from the compliance office to the compliance office. So that's how that. Do they have to ask for a release before they look at new schools, or can they? They, they? they can call another school, but that school will say, I'm sorry, I can't talk to you until I have a release. Okay. We haven't issued any releases as of yet. I can okay. certainly let you know that. Okay. And Abby, as a former NCAA Division I women's hockey athlete yourself, um, how much input can you bring to, you know, the, the position opening and to, you know, you particularly having been kind of in the shoes of these girls? Right. Yeah, that is, that's a big one. Um, you know, being in their shoes 10 years ago, being on the administration side now, and just having the contacts that I have around the women's hockey world is, uh, is very important to this search. Uh, you said you want to hire someone who's committed to the direction of the women's hockey program. What is the direction of the women's hockey program? Seeking excellence in the three C's, um, someone who's highly engaged in the community, uh, seeking to succeed against the top programs in the country, someone who runs um, a program at the highest levels in all respects. Do you guys feel you have the resources and you're dedicated, dedicating the resources to compete with, with North Dakota, Minnesota, and Wisconsin? Yeah, we've, we've been competitive with those programs in the past in, in, in women's hockey and other sports, and we're committed to continuing to do that. What kind of interest, uh, uh, either support or interest in the job have you gotten from alumni? Of the program, I'm not sure what that one means. What kind of in, I, how would I phrase it? What kind of interest have you seen from alumni of the program in terms of the coaching position? Whether it's them wanting to offer advice, giving you ideas for candidates, sure. and, and maybe some uh, interested in the job, like a Carolyn Alat who you know coaches up in Canada. Yeah, you may have a better sense of that. Than I. Yeah, we've had uh, alumni reach out to us and be very excited about the position. So I believe that the alumni. Are on board the ones that I spoke to. I'm guessing Michelle's not a candidate since she's on the committee. That could stay bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen committee sire candidates before. No. Committee sire candidates on the committee before. Any other questions? You have a target date for a hire? Uh, the timeline, the posting will be up for 30 days uh, so that we can attract both international and domestic candidates. 
Uh, we'll be moving through the process quickly throughout that time, but hopefully have a, a final candidate pool around the, the middle of the April for you. Uh, we talked about this this morning, uh, but eight out of ten of the search committee are women. Is the way that this played out in the community, is that indicative of that, or is it just kind of those are the, the ten people that you felt were, were best suited to help, help in yeah. the search? There was, I don't know of any conscious effort. I mean, we, we wanted a diverse candidate, a diverse search committee, of course, but it's a women's sport, so we were seeking expertise on women's hockey, and uh, I think it, it played out that way more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Is there any concern if you, if you wait 30 days and then go through the process of, of the finalists and whatnot? Uh, is there any concern about the recruiting for next year? Uh, you know, who's Shannon right now? Still the head coach of the program. Is, I mean, is she going to be doing that? Is are you going to be uh, is somebody from the staff going to be doing more of that part of it? Sure, we're certainly open to keeping the lines of communication with our current commits, um, keeping that dialogue ongoing and we'll honor the commitments that are out there, and that'll be made clear to our, uh, our new coach. The 30 day, is that a law, is that a state law requirement that's gotta be open that long? It's an institutional requirement, yeah. Okay. Have any of the recruits, uh, Matt talked about current players, have any of the recruits reached out to you to, to talk about concern for, for who might re be replacing Shannon? I think we can comment on recruits, right? I haven't spoken. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we're in a position to comment on recruits. What about the ones that have signed letters Yeah, so we've had open dialogue, yes. No one's asked out of their national era of intent at this time? Not at this time, and that's something that they they would start. That doesn't go through. Okay. Anything else? Okay, thank you folks for coming. Appreciate Thanks. it.